Hello, welcome to um, uh, this meeting of the Cabinet of Portsmouth City Council. Um, uh, just quick housekeeping, Jason, do you want to come and join us as you're presenting? Um, um, yeah. Uh, so, house, just housekeeping things, there's no fire alarm schedule, so if there is one, it's real and we meet by Queen Victoria. Um, this is live streamed, so welcome. Um, um, so, um, Judith and, and Rob, they'll see your back, and, um, and because the camera's just behind you. Um, you can wave <coughs> to, our, to our audience. Um, can everybody use the mics? Um, we've got a couple of deputations today, but let's just go around the table to, ex to, to people say who they are. David, do you want to start? David Williams, Chief Executive. Dominique Latouz, um, Consultant in Public Health. Chris Ward, Director of Finance. Hayley Trower, Air Quality Lead for Transport. Pam Turton, Assistant Director of Transport. Richard Lee, Responsible for Monitoring Air Quality. Jason Hosey, Director of Public Health. Gerald Mall Smith, Democratic Services. Uh, Gerald Ann Jackson, Leader of the Council and Chair of this meeting. Rob Wood, Cabinet Member for Children and Families. Dave Ashmore, Cabinet Member for Environment and Climate Change. Matthew Williamson, Cabinet Member for Health, Wellbeing and Social Care. Darren Sanders, Cabinet Member for Housing. Tom Wood, Cabinet Member for Resources. Okay, and I've got apologies from uh, Lee Hunt, Susie Horton, Lynn Stagg and... Steve Pitt, a um, couple of them ill, one because they're at work and one because they've got a family issue they have to deal with. Okay, um, any declarations of interest, colleagues? Matt? Uh, not a declaration as such, but it is my nephew's sixth birthday today, so I wish him very happy birthday, Theo. <laughs> uh, to the many millions who will be watching, I'm sure that that is uh, interesting. Um, Okay, so we had two deputations uh, from Judith and Rod. Should we, should, um, Judith, do you want to go first or, or second or third? Rod Bailey, happy to go first. Always I just want to say before I started that members may know that I've injured my leg and if I'm squirming about or standing up, it's because sitting down is the most difficult thing to do. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, uh, Judith, do you want to stand or, or, or whatever? No, whatever's most comfortable. I just want to be able to move about without do, you all do, wondering do. what I'm doing. Do, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Okay. Rod, welcome. The floor is yours. I think the rule is six minutes, um, but it's yours for that period. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming, Rod. Thank you. Um, I'm Rod Bailey. I'm chair of the Milton Neighbourhood Planning Forum. We're trying to plan for sustainable development in Milton for the next 15 years. In Milton is Air Quality Management Area 9. Air Quality Management Area 9 is just about compliant as it is. Um, what we are here today, we haven't had a chat really, but we're here today to approve a small area Class B clean air zone, a Class B charging clean air zone. This is a monster of a pack, it's about 800 pages. I haven't read it all, I couldn't read it all, but I've read some, some of it. What I'm bothered about, and why I'm making this deputation, is this is a public health issue, and I believe that a small area clean air zone doesn't quite do the job. I'll explain why. In the clean air zone charging, um, data that you provided here, we've got evidence that suggests that a D-class um, charge would reduce pollution levels by significant amounts, I think for commercial road it's something like 34% for um, our area down in Milton it's even higher it's 51%. For um, London Road, uh, lots of, well, London Road isn't actually covered. 
what we're doing with a small area zone is excluding London Road because we're coming down Kingston Crescent, down Fratton Road, and then round towards Old Portsmouth, and we're including Commercial Road and Alfred Road. And yet, Air Quality Management Area 6, which is London Road, already has got readings of 44 uh, micrograms per cubic metre. That's significantly above the 40. Even if we were to do a Class B, according to the outline business case, if we were to do the Class B, that reduction would only be a 5%. Okay? That would take it down to 41.8 micrograms per cubic meter. But we're not doing it, are we? We are concentrating in a small part of um, Port Sea Island because it seems to me that DEFRA have um, required a targeted feasibility study in the southwestern corner. But what will happen, according to reading this, um, these papers, what's likely to happen, and likely is a significant word here, because what we're trying to do is to achieve compliance with legal air quality objectives in the shortest possible time by the means most likely to achieve it. Okay. So what's likely to happen by having a small area charging zone, and it's likely to happen because your outline business case actually says so, is that many people will avoid the clean air zone. Now for me and us at trying to do a, a neighbourhood plan for Milton, the risk, which is significant, is that the uh, traffic, particularly cars, and now we've got more HGVs, would come down the Eastern Road along Velder Avenue into Milton Road and into Eastney Road. According to the annual status report for 2019, Velder Avenue, Eastern Road, Milton Road and Eastney Road the pollution levels are rising. <coughs> it isn't clear to me why the council has faith in other means, the non-charging means, of reducing the pollution levels. And the reason is this. Since about 2001, the Portsmouth Plan has aimed to reduce car dependency, something like two-thirds by 2020. It hasn't done so. The uh, 2006 supplementary planning document talks about development and mitigating uh, air pollution. It clearly hasn't done so. And in 2012, the Portsmouth Plan aims, toward, aims to achieve integrated sustainable um, transport. It hasn't managed to do so. These factors are outside our control, but the local authority has a responsib responsibility to try and do this. Now, what you seem to be doing is modelling as well. You're modelling um, predictions on reducing uh, pollution levels, but your own uh, outline business court case actually says that modelling can only be used as a tool. Mm. And as a tool, it's, got to, it's dependent on the conditions that go into it. Now, in the, you also say that the registrations, the car registrations between 2009 and 2018 have gone up about 15%. You talk about a 4% traffic growth between 2018 and 2022, whereas the Transport Environment and Scrutiny Panel of 3rd of November 2016, Rod, that's only three ready. years ago... You've hit your time limit. Do you well, want to just draw it to a close? Okay. Well, that's, that's producing um, or predicting um, increases in traffic by 41%. You've got inconsistent data, you've got modelling that's dependent on accurate data, and at best is a predictable... Yep. It doesn't cut it. There's too many risks. This is a public health risk. Well, can I summarise it as this then? There is in, in environmental law a principle called the precautionary principle. 
And that is, unless there's scientific evidence to actually prove that a means of deliver, dealing with a public health issue that could cause public harm, unless there's scientific evidence to say that it could um, dispose of that harm, you take the precautionary approach and don't go ahead with it. And there's too much inconsistencies in this. I'm sorry. Okay. Thanks very much. Robert. I needed longer, but <laughs> that's right. Thank you. Thank you. Judith. Thank you, uh, Cabinet, and thank you, Rod, because um, I've cut out a bit of my speech that was covering exactly the same ground uh, as a result of what you said. I think the report is superb. I think it. Uh, leads us to a different conclusion. Conclusion: We in the Labour Party fully support the zone, but we think it's too small and uh, is therefore not uh, going to work. Um, in particular, it's an enormous effort to introduce such a small zone, and it means it cannot be value for money. Um, there'll be displacement to surrounding areas. It's easy to drive around it. Um, I, I, I know that when we come onto the M275 to get down to South Sea, we face two or three choices. And uh, we, we can often make a choice that avoids going through the, the zone. There will be displacement to surrounding areas, so that's, uh, which is important. And those are the areas that are the worst. And those are the that are already bad enough to justify a zone themselves. They're the areas where our schools are as well, coincidentally. Then they're not in the... It, concentrated in the city centre, as, as in many towns. They're concentrated on the routes where displaced traffic will go, um, like AQ Area 6. It leaves hotspots, um, just as Rod has mentioned, with very little less than uh, um, the figures show that they need a zone just as badly. Um, why are you not tackling these at the same time? It goes against, um, it, it multiplies the opportunities for arguments with the few, I believe it is a few, businesses and citizens left in the city who don't care about climate change or who don't care about it because their children aren't living here and their relations. And it contributes to, um, you know, it, it doesn't do enough to contribute to raising Portsmouth up the league, league tables. And by the time we're ready to implement this, I believe technical advice and standards will have overtaken it. I think it's a gross betrayal of the um, citizens of Portsmouth to uh, leave us with um, so much effort going into such a small zone. I urge you to grasp the nettle and to be more ambitious. Um, even if um, it does, there is some change in the time, which is relied on quite a lot, to less polluting vehicles just in the natural uh, turnover of um, vehicles. <coughs> It, it still is going to leave, lead to that problem. I, I, do, I do think this report is, is – I have read it all it, – it's really good and it's really compelling, but it compels me towards wanting a whole island zone. What's needed in our overcrowded island city is a whole zone. This will turn uh, – in turn will help to ease other traffic problems and encourage people to walk, cycle and use buses. It will make it much easier for you, the Cabinet, to have a comprehensive uh, traffic and transport strategy, which I believe Lynn is working on now, that will make sense. I think this could become a real obstacle in her producing an understandable and comprehensible uh, uh, proposition, this little, little zone. I don't want to find us here in two years when this tiny scheme is implemented, of having to take the obvious steps of then extending it. I want to, av I want to avoid disproportionate um, argument and uh, petty discussions about such a tiny, ineffective zone. I um, also, um, I mean, on previous occasions when we've argued about this sort of thing, uh, I want, want us to be able to make a you to make a decision today completely um, separated from what else we're doing about carbon change. I know we're doing a lot about that the city at council as an organisation has a low carbon footprint. I know that we've got lots of things in the pipeline generally on the carbon and uh, climate change initiative. Those aren't arguments. I know when you, in the 9th of September debate you brought up all those things rather than actually tackling the evidence in front of us, which is that we need a whole city air zone. So I'm not going to go there, but let's not have endless bits of debate as you did on the 9th of September about other things that are not to do with this important issue. Um, we know how difficult it is to reduce uh, car ownership, but this would actually help 
uh, Councillor Stagg in her efforts to reduce car ownership across the town and to reduce car usage. This would be a positive step in terms of the overall strategy across the city. Uh, we know all about blaming central government. That was also brought up when you debated this on the 9th of September. And I just don't, th I think we just need for once to recognise that children and adults are suffering from air pollution. And that just for having such a tiny zone won't help us to become the green, <coughs> clean air place that we all want to live in. You know, even if you, oddly enough, where you've, you've, uh, the zone you've chosen is rather short on, on the sort of dangerous places to live, which are the main roads where people are living right on the street at the level of the polluting vehicle. Um, it's those, those people who have to travel in and out of the city centre using a buggy. Um, the, the statistics are clear that people are using accident and emergency and the NHS generally more for um, pulmonary and respiratory diseases and that at least some of those are attributable to um, uh, air quality. Um, I, I just, I, having a grand new grandchild and perhaps having a bad leg has particularly affected me. I couldn't bear the idea of my granddaughter suffering breathing difficulties and having to wake up with her in the middle of the night on the nights we look, look after her and taking her to A&E because she can't breathe. What an agony for parents, for grandparents, for families. And also when you consider the long-term damage that does to little babies' organs as they're growing, um, you know, it, there is now quite a lot of medical evidence that we just have to do more. So I can't believe... Judith, that, you've hit your time. Okay. I can't believe that you're thinking of doing something so footling, particularly when your own um, party has identified environmental concerns as its main, second main policy concern out of two. We must do something brave and ambitious. You, you really need to be strengthened um, by the technical advice you've had here and take grasp the nettle and go for the whole things, particularly as it's two years to consult and two years to, to develop the ideas. Let's develop the big ideas. If you have to retreat at that stage and there's obvious reason to do it, then retreat. But surely not this tiny little thing now. Okay. Thank you very much, Judith. Um, thank you. Um, Jason, as this is your report, do you want to introduce it? Yeah, so uh, taking a... Sorry, Chair, can I just ask, ask one thing? Yeah. That's OK, with, with Jason's help, as he's in, going to introduce this. Um, shall we let him introduce it first, and let's come to questions when he's done so. Jason, introduce... Leap in. OK. Um, first, I'd like to say this is, uh, as, as has been partly pointed out in the deputations, this is a response that we have to make. Um, it's very... Uh, important that we respond within the legal time frames of, that we have to respond by and that we have to respond in the way that we have done in this proposed document before you. Uh, those are basically to meet stipulations set out by DEFRA, the Joint Air Quality Unit and the Government in how we must form our response and how we have to do the monitoring and the modelling. It is heavily based on modelling, and I, I definitely share the concerns of, of others about, you know, all models are wrong, some are useful, um, uh, because inevitably computer modelling is, is never going to be able to capture all of the different things that, that can happen. Um, what this allows us to do is to respond to JACU in keeping with the limits that have been set by government on what we have to do to meet the directive in the shortest possible time and um, with the least uh, external impacts on others. So that's that's what this report presented to you does. Um, there is always a chance that the modelling is wrong and that we come back in two years' time and find that we, we haven't necessarily met the targets stipulated. That's, that is certainly a risk. Um, uh, there's also um, a, a, a difficulty involved in modelling some of the areas around um, <coughs> other actions which are in the in the plan, and this model can't capture all of the other things that we want to do to to improve the city's uh, health and well-being and the other ambitions that we've got. So, with that sort of very cautious introduction to it, I'll say that this is very important that we do submit this by the end of this week 
and that we have it laid out in the format that it currently is because that allows us to, to meet those requirements set out by central government. Okay, thank you. Rob, you had a question. You've actually addressed it. What I wanted to do, because I've listened to what both the deputations have said, and obviously I have the responsibility for children and families, and I'm taking totally seriously what's being asked about about what we're trying to do, which is the ambition, first of all, is at the end of the day when we implement this is different from what we need to do to make sure we meet government compliance to get this off the ground. So setting something out in this report that may be questionable is not what we're trying to do. We're trying to set out what we can do and therefore th that does not say what our ambition is. So from the public health side of things, given what you've just heard about the impact on uh, you know, young children, families, etc., in the city. How would you respond to that? I know you've started, but you are responsible for public health. Um, so, from that point of view, I think this this report and the actions within it allow us to fulfil our legal obligations, and that means the legal obligations to respond as we as we have done to the government, but also the legal obligations we hope to bring air quality under the 40 microgram. Um, limits set by the EU and by the government. As we've said on a number of occasions um, and um, in the work that we've presented to, to um, both citizens and, and to various cross-party working groups, if we can go further than that and we can reduce the air pollution by greater than that, we will do more health benefit. Uh, we will uh, incur more health benefits as a, as a city. And if we can get people out of private vehicles and out of cars and more using public transport and active transport modes, there's a huge health dividend to be gained through that as well. And we can do that without necessarily destroying our local economy. So those, those are the challenges that we, we want to meet and the, the, the ambitions we need to set ourselves as a city. Okay. Richard, could I ask, just before we give, go on, um, one of the things that Rod said was, was around air pollution rising in the city. Um, I, I know this is all based on modelling, but in, in, the, in the real stuff that we're, we're looking at, are, is, is air pollution rising or falling um, around the city? Uh, Rod made reference to the Bowder Avenue corridor yeah. coming into the city. And he would be right if we look at the annual status of support, there has been an increase um, when we compare that between 2017 and 2018. The increase was very small, around about 7.41%. Uh, That's what the report is telling me. In terms of across the city, I think it would be unfair to say that there has been a deterioration um, across the entire city. There are a number of hotspots. And Rod is again correct in saying that one of the hotspots in London Road is outside the proposed location or the geographical extent of the clean air zone um, that's being proposed today. So um, in conclusion, I would say there are a number of areas in the city where air quality is deteriorating, but likewise there are a number of areas where air quality is improving. Okay, thanks very much. Um, okay, just to start this off then, I think my understanding of what we're asked to do is to respond to the government's imposition of this uh, on the city um, in a way that meets their legally defined way of doing things. Um, and, and I'm pleased we've done that. Um, it is all based on modelling, not based on reality, um, but, but that's just what government are expecting us to do and that's what we have to do. Personally, I'm really pleased um, that we've got recommendation six that notes the proposals in the plan are a small part of the wider work of the council in undertaking it to address air pollution and climate change in the city, particularly in relation to public transport improvements through the transforming cities bid. Um, my, my real worry with this is that this is a half-baked proposal imposed by government that actually doesn't address the real issue. And I'm pleased that we're, we're having, we, we, we've responded in the way that we have um, because we have to, 
but it seems to me that there is way more work that needs to happen in terms of air pollution and the government doesn't recognise that at all. Um, this is unjoined up, this is in the terms of the government's proposals uh, and the way in which they've pushed this, it's, it's unambitious, unjoined up, ill thought out, short term and doesn't work. And yet we're having to do this because the government say it has. And so for me, um, this is a sideshow. The real work we have to do on air, air pollution is a much bigger piece of work and uh, and uh, and is a serious piece of work while this is just having to fill in a form that the government has sent us. Um, so I think that the way in which the government have, have looked at this is, is really poor. Um, they've not reacted positively to any of our suggestions. So we've said to them, why don't you give everybody a bus pass to encourage people not to use private cars and to use the bus instead. Not interested from government. Uh, we've asked them to look at matching the investment in uh, alternative means of transport, public transport, walking, bikes, etc., um, to match the investment they put into London uh, and they've not responded, they're not interested. Uh, and actually London gets 11 times the amount of investment into uh, sustainable transport that we get. Um, uh, we've asked them to look at, um, at funding, um, uh, transferring our, our taxi fleet to an electric fleet so it's not producing um, uh, harmful emissions. Uh, and they've not responded, they've not been interested. Um, so I think that's hugely disappointing in what government's done. And my thanks to the officers for, for working within the constraints that have been set for us but I think it's a real problem and, and I think it's so short-sighted if we look at what they're doing this is not about reducing air pollution what they're doing is incentivizing moving air pollution so there's going to be an incentive for people not to shop or not to come into to town centers but to drive to out-of-town shopping centers because they're not in clean air zones um, and therefore because shops won't have to pay um, deliver, um, for, for the charges on their lorries for delivering um, in the out-of-town shopping centres uh, and that will again mean that there are um, that the retail centres will be under stress and people will lose their jobs and the people who will lose their jobs and the people will be inconvenienced are the people on the lowest incomes who will be hit again um, and look at the issue of white link um, so People using the white link, the lorries using the white link ferry in Portsmouth going to the Isle of Wight will be hit by this charge if they're non-compliant, but if they go from Southampton or if they go from Lymington, they're not. So you're just moving it. So you're encouraging people to drive all the way through the New Forest to get to the Lymington car ferry, to get on there and then drive much further all the way across the Isle of Wight. So there'll be more air pollution, but it'll just not be in 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 one place it'll be somewhere else and I think the government's proposals are really weak really ill thought out but we have to do we have to answer the exam question Judith I'm sorry I, I, we, 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 we've been busy so, well um, uh, so I think I, I like the idea that we've got time to consult I think there are things that we could and should do one of my un my understanding is that air pollution levels at night are lower and I'm wondering whether to support the shops and things like that, whether we can look at whether deliveries at night um, into um, commercial road, etc., um, can be can can have an exception because we we don't want to drive the shops there out of business, even though the government seems keen to do so. So I I, I I'm personally I think this is. This is what the government have asked. We've answered the exam question. It, it, the exam question was wrong, but we've answered it. You need to be more ambitious. And strangely, I, I know the Conservative view is that we that, that we shouldn't be doing this at all, and they think this is a rubbish thing to do. Um, and we've heard from Judith that she thinks it should be a city-wide thing. I think we're in the middle, and 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 normally. Um, uh, being at the middle as opposed to on the extremes is is probably the right right place to be. Um, so, um, as in so many things in life. So, so that's that's my bit. I'm happy to propose it. Um, I think this is and my thanks to people who've worked ludicrously hard um, within this um, uh, to to get this sorted uh, within the 
parameters that are set by a, by government. Um, so let's just see. Um, Mr. Ashmore, I presume, as portfolio holder, you will want to, with responsibility, you will want to say. You are correct in your assumption, Leader. Um, just to follow on from what you were saying, really, uh, I think it's, it, you know, I've had a lot of um, social media talking about this. I've been um, a lot of correspondence about this, and it's almost like a distraction uh, that, the, that, you know, that this is about uh, this proposed clean air zone, when in fact, as, as it says on the recommendation, it's a small part of improving our air quality here. And as you've said about the exam question, uh, Leader, it it's like a government answer to a government question um, and it doesn't address the long-term sustainable ways of cleaning our air. Um, um, it, it goes on about compliance, hitting compliance. Well to me that, you know, if, it, if you're a clean air campaigner, do you really want to hit compliance or do you want to actually smash those targets or do you just want to be treading water and keeping the, the nose above water there? I think we need to do more and I think, you know, this, this report, and it is a good report, it puts not just the, the clean air zone proposal, it explains everything in detail, explains all the other measures, the non-charging measures, and also the things that we're going to do, and things that we could do better. But the clean air zone itself, you know, according to the modelling, whatever area, whatever size you've got it on, it hits it at the lowest, it hits compliance at the lowest time, which is what the government need to answer. But it, you know, it, it addresses the NO2, the, the NOx emissions, but it, you know, it, we need to be doing more than just hitting hitting compliance we need to you know the clean air zone doesn't address things like uh, the particulates in the air it doesn't explain how we're going to get people out of private cars it doesn't explain um, you know how we can cope with traffic congestion that would still be there um, you know and it's we're attempting to get people to move to public transport yet a clean air zone proposes charging public transport um, you know we've put uh, you know, we've managed to do retrofitting of the buses. Um, you know, we, we want to put more into uh, cycling. That's my big thing. I'd love to see more in the city. A joined up, perhaps segregated cycling infrastructure. We've asked the government for that. They're not interested. We've asked the government to help provide for electric vehicle fleet. They haven't really. You know, the, their their responses have been very bland. Um, we want, you know, we want some long term sustainable solutions. Something that's actually going to get, you know, people to change this modal shift we keep talking about to get a wholesale change that people actually want to use public transport you, the, the clean air zone is the stick but we, you know it's we, we need the carrots as well otherwise if you, if you just put a charge on things thinking it will dissuade people from using it all it can do is really attack um, you know the the salaries, the wages of the less well off, while the richer can just pay to pollute, which is obviously not what we should be trying to look at. Uh, and I know that putting up prices on things uh, for people who can't afford it doesn't always work. I used to buy you know, 20 cigarettes a day. Um, the prices kept going up, but I kept buying them. It just meant I had less to spend. Uh, you know, it just annoyed me. Uh, but it didn't stop me smoking. It was vaping that come along, and that helped me wean me off, and you know, and many other people. So. You know, if you're going to put the charge on cars, if you're going to, you know, say we need less private car use, give them that alternative. Give them that sustainable alternative, and that's what we want, and that's the ambition uh, that we, we're lacking with clean air zone. But that's the ambition that is in this report with the other the non-charging measures, and which we, as a council, really want to to promote. Uh, can I just ask as well? Um, there's a, a, Julia, Julia suggested a whole city zone, um, and could you, and um, my sorry. An island zone, okay. Um, just to make sure. Um, in terms of, of, of how that would be funded, um, um, Pam, would you like to tell us how that might be funded? Um, Jackie have been quite clear. That, uh, who is Jackie? Uh, the Joint Air Quality Unit, the recipients of this report, have been clear in that they won't fund a citywide um, or an island wide zone um, if a smaller zone is shown to bring about compliance in the shortest possible time and that is the case with this. Okay, so if we wanted to do an island wide one, how much would we therefore have to find to fund that? Many millions. Okay, thank you. That that's very helpful. Okay, Matthew. Uh, thank you, Gerald, and, um, and thank you for asking that question because that, that kicks me off. So I was actually going to read the bit of the report that actually says that, which is 5.7, and it says, however, Jacku have confirmed that where a number of charging uh, 
CAZ are shown to see, achieve compliance in the same year, funding will only be granted for the lowest class of CAZ that is shown to achieve compliance. Therefore, as classes B, C and D are all shown to achieve compliance by 2022, a class B charging CAZ is being recommended as the preferred class of charging CAZ. Um, and this really is the crux of the issue. This is something that was um, I mentioned at the last cabinet meeting back in in September when we discussed this. Is this is a this is a sticking plaster. This is a effectively a massive massive distraction to everything else that's going on. And uh, and and the thing about um, clean air zones is that the council, as long as they comply with what the government says, gets any any money that comes from the clean air zone. So we would get double whammies if we had did a island wine clean air zone because A we'd have to pay to implement it and then we have absolutely no guarantee whatsoever that the government would allow us to get the money that is raised from the clean air zone. We have no guarantee. In other places where um, uh, councils have not been um, uh, have not gone along with what the government said. The government have actually stopped councils from receiving um, monies where they haven't followed their guidance. So we run the risk of not only having millions of pounds worth of setting up a clean air zone if we went for citywide because the government wouldn't pay for it, but we also run the risk of the government then turning around saying we don't agree with this, um, we're not going to allow you, because of course this is a competency for a local council we're not going to allow you to have the money that's raised from it either um, so that puts us in a ridiculous situation um, but let's get back to the fact that this is a distraction look at the size of this report look at that look at all the work that's had to be put into doing this because the governments have decided with their modelling which, as we've heard from our Director of Public Health, is um, interesting at best, is not reliable in terms of, um, uh, in terms of actual outcomes, doesn't, as, as the Leader of the Council say, doesn't particularly reflect reality. <clears throat> but we have to go through this entire palaver, look at modelling that keeps changing, so we keep getting different answers as time goes on. So originally we were looking at um, a, a larger clean air zone um, that was a possibility. Then it's been done down to, to a B because that's what the latest modelling says. So we then get stuck with that's what we have to do, that's what we get funding for. And yet all this time we get nothing from government at all on the things we've actually asked for that would really help to improve air quality in the city. So again, I will list, I will go through again, converting all taxis to electric vehicles, free buses passes for all residents, new bus and tram services and a local bus depot, removal of government housing targets, working to support businesses, a car scrappage scheme, extra funding for cycling facilities. Nothing, 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 nothing. Government has said, we're only interested in what we want, which is a, this sticking plaster, this um, sledgehammer of a clean air zone, rather than the things we, as local councillors, which has been agreed across, uh, I, I, I do believe across at least some parties on the council, that these things are important. Actually, when we had that discussion at full council, I think every party agreed to this being, uh, being sent to government. And the government came back with nothing. So we've, what we've tried to do as a, as, as a thing, because we've had nothing there, we've then included that in our clean, clean air fund submission as well. But then that takes away from the distraction again of doing this report, takes away from all those other things you're doing. All the officer time that's gone into all of this to keep the government happy is stopping us from putting officer times into putting more electric vehicle charge points in, cycling initiatives and events, stomp for stamps, clean air day, bus retrofit programme, public transport information, tree planting, 
um, the, the work on the climate emergency, on the Transforming City Funds, on park and ride expansion, on the LC WIP, on future mobility zones, on getting that bus depot, changing attitudes to travel and personal mobility. All of our officers could have been spending more time on all of this, but instead, because the government doesn't really know what it's doing and has a very simplistic attitude to this, that we have to spend time on this, on providing a clean air zone which will not have anything long term. Because let's remember, as soon as you achieve compliance, your clean air zone goes. It's not there forever. And if you want it again, if you wanted to continue it, you would have to pay for it yourself. You would have to pay for the upkeep and maintenance of that. The government would cease funding. So this doesn't doesn't affect things uh, uh, for people at all. Um, it's not what the people of the city want. It's not that's come through in this city of way of doing things. And I speak as someone who has a particular stake in this air pollution, being asthmatic, and I have been since I grew up in the 1980s um, in an urban polluted area as well. So I completely agree with with uh, with. Um, Councillor smiled in terms of she doesn't want her granddaughter growing up in a in a polluted city. But what I don't want to do is keep messing around, playing to the government's tune because they decide that one particular thing is going to help solve these issues. Whereas as we know that all these other things are going to have a much uh, more sustainable impact, are going to make a much greater difference in the long term. But we're being distracted all the time by having to react to what government says. So I completely support the report, but I'm really, really frustrated that we're even at this situation and that all this officer time has had to be put into something which is necessary because we're told it is, but is taking us away and is distracting us from all the other really good things that are already being done in the city and can be done in the future. Okay, um, just before we get to that, Judith, you had a question, and I, and I think, I, um, f and and uh, and I would be interested if 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 the pro your proposal is a, an island-wide zone, um, uh, and that the cost of it is many millions. I think we would be ha useful to hear from you how you're proposing to pay for that. Question for you rather than an answer. I mean, I. Okay, I well, I'm, I'm very happy for you to provide both. Okay. The question uh, would be to have had a uh, s slightly more full um, financial analysis that showed the proportional difference between costing to do the whole island and doing the small zone. Because I, it seems to me that the small zone is costing a lot for a very small gain. So some form of cost benefit analysis that compared the two things would be useful. Um, that was part of my question. Um, the other question, the question I had before, was about the uh, efforts you'd made to, um, which I'd read in, in the report, to try and persuade the government of something else. What I, my question, <coughs> that remains from that, because that was helpful, is to see if there's any way you could strengthen your recommendations, because uh, the strength of feeling that's come out from uh, the speeches you've given today isn't quite mirrored in this report. The, the should, I would like to question why you haven't got some stronger recommendations about future commitment to improving air quality across the whole yeah. island. Well, I th I personally, I think it's covered in. It's, it's. This is a technical report that we have to put in because the government says we have to do it in this way. So I think um, uh, recommendation six is is good and encompasses that, and, and I'm happy with that. Um, I would be very interested, Judith, if you could, um, if you could come forward and, um, and, and let us know of of the proposal. We've heard that the additional cost is many millions um, and we'll, I'll look forward to hearing from, from you about um, how, that, how you would fund that because that was the council would have to pick that up. Um, uh, there is a 12 week consultation period and, and if you could let us know how you would be funding that within that time then we could look at it when that consultation period is finished. Um, that would be extremely helpful. I, Okay, if I do that, I wouldn't be doing this job at the moment. But uh, I, I do, uh, I do think some cost-benefit analysis that even might persuade the government mm, of the, that what they're spending money on this but, time would be useful. But, but, but I think the government has been very clear what this is. Now, I, 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 
I don't think we should, as, as public representatives, be making commitments to do things without providing the funding. Um, I, I know we shouldn't be in an era where we expect unicorns to be delivered to everybody um, by just saying things are, ha are possible without, without actually coming up with the real funding for it. Um, so I look forward to your proposals from the Labour Group um, about how that's going to be funded um, uh, uh, to see that soon. And, and once we've got that, then we can look at that uh, as a serious piece of work and to work to see what other things would have to be cut to fund that. Colleagues, um, we've got a series of recommendations here. Colleagues, um, are you happy with these recommendations? Yes. Thank you very much indeed. Um, thank you, colleagues, for all the work you've done on this. Um, we'll go to the next stage of this now. Um, thank you.